Well, thanks for coming in, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. I appreciate the effort that you've made to come in and be on the channel. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. Like a flying swallow or a darting sparrow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. Like a flying swallow or like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, I'm sure many of you have seen this, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. And that would go contrary to a lot of the generational teaching about curses where they say, if you, uh, well, curses are passed down by generations, but that's not necessarily the case. If by way of, um, it's undeserved. And I always thought that, you know, I always thought, why, why would somebody bear the weight of a curse that's undeserved? Why would that happen to somebody? I always wondered about that. We'll just fix this up a bit. Always wondered, how does that work? You know, it's not fair. And here we get evidence that it isn't fair and that it's not the idea of what's going on. But the point of the matter is, what about if it is deserved? What about if you've been negligent, abusive, uh, or this kind of thing in a relationship? Because people talk about karma and what happens with karma. Um, and, man, I, I got a funny feeling that this really happens. It really, 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 really does rest on us. For instance, in Galatians, it talks about if we try and keep the law, we're under a curse. So, if you try and keep the Mosaic law, you come under a curse. If you try and um, do harm some, by somebody, you are going to bring that harm on yourself or the consequences of that harm on yourself. But people don't want to listen to this. They don't want to hear this. I can remember when the vaccine came out, people were warned. Um, some of these young people went, well, I'm going to have it. And then later on they go, oh, I wish I had a listen. They don't want to listen. They choose not to listen. And these people are haters. They're haters of the light. They don't want to see the light or come into the light. They flutter around in the dart around in the darkness. Um, that puts them in a position where the light becomes undeserved. And none of us deserve the light. None of us. We come into the light by choice, by means of desperation. You get, you got to, man, I'm telling you, life's got to get tough for you to come in the light. Let me just give myself some light here. You've got to get in the light, man. Just come in from work, very unorganized at the moment, but we'll get it. So they're fluttering around in the darkness, starting around with each other, fluttering around find a lot of these people when they ruin their relationships <coughs> they do curse themselves because they've been negligent they're going to get negligence in the next relationship they've been they've triangulated guess what they're going to get triangulation in their next relationship they've they've lied guess what they're going to get lying in their next relationship um They've cursed behind your back. Guess what? They're going to get cursed in their next relationship. And they haven't rested on the the fact that, you know, we've got something good and it's working out. They're just not resting on that. They're fluttering around. They're darting around. A lot of these people are overtired. They're worn out. Um, they've got narcissistic injury. Uh, they can't work out why things are going wrong for them all the time. Um, they they go back to narcissist exes, they get robbed again, bashed again, abused again. They try and find the light down the, the throat of a bong, only to end up sick and tired and hating one another. Alcohol, they try the alcohol, 
they go for the um, medications and got all the excuses as they get older. Things get worse really quick. And so while they're emotionally fluttering and darting around, feeding each other's egos without any responsibility or accountability whatsoever, they're bringing a curse on themselves. And guess what the curse is? Medications, drugs, mental health issues, body collapsing, all these negligences. And <clears throat> if you look at 1 Samuel 14, 28, 29, then one of the soldiers told him, Your father bound the troops with a solemn oath, saying, Curse is the man who eats food today, and that is why the people are faint. This was um, Jonathan, Saul's son, I'm sure who ate the food that was cursed by the father. And this is one of the proofs that curses are real because Jonathan later died in a very serious battle alongside his father. And here in 1 Samuel 17, 43, Am I a dog, he said to David? This is Goliath, right? You've all heard of Goliath because many of you have a Goliath. And my dog, he said to David, that you come at me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, but it didn't pay off. This is what happens to a lot of people. There's a lot of people, right, grandized people, that think they've got the stature and the strength of a Goliath, right? They're running around thinking people, oh, they're not going to hurt me. I'm just going to offend them. I'll offend this one and do, do that one. They're only weak. They've only got sticks. And they underestimate people all the time. That's what narcissist type people do. They underestimate people. They think they know people. They think they got people wrapped up. And then all of a sudden, their world starts to come undone because they're trying to curse people that are trying to bless them. And you see this all the time. They'll curse your God, and the Philistine cursed David by his God, or by his gods. And what people don't understand is, it doesn't matter who your God is, they're not going to stand up to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not going to stack up against the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no God that can stand up against the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They can't do it. And we know this because what happened to Goliath? Well, this man thought that David only had sticks. But he had five smooth stones. And a lot of people ask, why did David choose five smooth stones out of the brook? Why? I'll tell you why. Because David, because uh, Goliath had four brothers. And if he took down Goliath and his brothers wanted to step in, he was ready to take down the brothers as well. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. I've had um, <clears throat> vicious, hostile family members try and take me out. And it's really sad because you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to get on with things and, um, you know, be a good person. But they're not going to let you. And then all of a sudden... Um, I've had to turn around and say, whatever's going on with you guys, you take it on with my family members. And then the sticks turn into stones. They don't wanna they don't wanna mess with people that can confront them and, and you know, they've been exposed. You know, they've worn everyone out to the point where people are starting to get upset with them behind the scenes. I oh, know these people don't want to deal with that stuff. Um Another passage. Though they curse, you will bless. When they rise up, they will be put to shame. But your servant will rejoice. This is one of the things that happens to hostile, narcissistic interferers. They seem to be put to shame. I've seen several of these people that have attacked my life. <clears throat> where I was doing good, where I was being the best person that I could be in the situations where they were involved, and all they ended up was with shame. They thought they were rising up. They thought they were rising up and pulling me down. But all they ended up with 
with shame. They tried to curse me while I blessed. I blessed while they cursed. And they thought they were rising up. They thought I couldn't tell that these people, there's something wrong here, there's something odd here. You know, and you're with a family member and the family member's going, I just can't work out what's going on. You can see it as clear as day. And all, they all end up put to shame. Well, you're, well I, to be honest with you, I don't rejoice in bad things that happen to people. I don't want people to suffer or be harmed or hurt or upset or sad. So I get no joy out of harming anybody. No, because you don't have to. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. These people that are fluttering and darting around, and they're fluttering and darting around and feeding each other bad things and things that don't matter and things that, that you know, they get mixed up with married people and spoiling families, ruining their lives. They're unhealthy. Um, they're miserable. But they flutter and dart around, grooming each other's egos and pumping each other's egos up. And it's all undeserved. Just like an undeserved curse so is an undeserved blessing so these fluttering sparrows and darting swallows <clears throat> who you know blessing each other and stroking each other's egos and heart hurts and wounds making out that it's all good when it's not they're really just they're just bringing a curse on themselves it is deserved because if you treat people wrongly and neglect the people in your relationship, you will deserve a curse. It's just how it works. But if you haven't, then a curse will not rest on you. So if you've got things happening to you that you're not sure of, that are bringing harm to you, you don't know why, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the listeners right now that you would break the power of destruction of the lives of these people, these listeners. Father, I ask you to bless my enemies. I pray for those who curse me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye.